Hi guys, I'm back at it with tissues up my nose. I don't know what to call these. I guess just the strips that are hanging down that are there, the panels. I'll call them panels. These are all the pieces I put interfacing under them. I kind of went with a different color, pink, red, peach color. I just thought this complemented all the other colors better. So that's why I chose this pink. This is just gonna get sewn on here on both sides. So there's four of these strips and two of these strips and then two backs. So I had to sew it all together. I don't think I showed any part of making this. It was pretty, pretty simple. Two pieces of this gold sheet fabric and then two pieces of interfacing too. It's still very like loose. The fabric's pretty lightweight and I use lightweight interfacing. I just basically made a half circle and then extended the top to have, you know, seam allowances, seam allowances around here. And then I just kind of sewed it like a pillow, flipped it inside out, ironed it down, and then I did some top stitching around the edge, of course, and then it closed up the holes, like, right here. And then I did another top stitching right here, kind of helped me guide to where I'm gonna put the beads and stuff, so... And then if you see, there's, like, a mark right here and right here. That's just, like, the disappearing fabric marker ink, so I just have to wet that, and then it will be gone. And I just put some really skinny straps on it, because it'll just tie around my waist under whichever layer that I tie it around my waist under. I decided to do some top stitching on the pink. I was thinking about doing it on the gold, but then it would have two sets of top stitching, and then this seam would kind of be flipped this way, and it would kind of be in the way of this seam, so I was like, you know what, I'll just slip it into the pink part, top stitch, and then I'll have, you know, a set of top stitching on the outside. And I'm done with all of this lovely top stitching. Here's my choker and then my two hair bands. I don't think these look too terribly nice because they're a little wonky. Because I like pulled it out a lot right here but then I got lazy with like pressing it. But the cool thing is that these go on tear. Hopefully it won't look that bad. And then once the beading goes on and everything, I mean I don't think it looks terrible but I know I could do better. But I have to like not be a perfectionist because this will never get done. I've been working on a lot of beading and I call it beading because I feel like like real beading is supposed to be sewn on but all of these are glued on. I learned this technique from a YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description box to her video. But basically you just take puffy paint and this use this as the glue. You can use more if you want it to show more or less. I'm just using just a little bit of it so it doesn't show as much. You just mostly see the bead but you kind of can see the this is um, glitter puffy paint. You can kind of see it through the bead a little bit. You can do dots of glue and put a bead in each dot but I'm doing this way because it's faster and <laughs> time is of the essence so as you see I just put some puffy paint here. This is definitely too much. I forgot I just cleaned out the nozzle so the the paint was coming out more so I probably should have been a little bit more careful but it'll be alright. I usually work in sections a little bit larger than this but not too big because the puffy paint will start to dry. Gently press it in and then move it if I need to. And that's how I've been beating everything. Here's some more beaded stuff. This has paint on it too. Um, these pieces and yes I'll show you everything once I have the beading done on everything. Here are most of my foam pieces that, um, before of course they're painted and a lot of them are getting glued together but before I do any of that I like to kind of heat them up so the edges curve. I think this helps it look less foam-like. I'm going to show you on a scrap because just how I have it set up, I don't want to heat up any of my actual pieces. The camera is right in front of me and I'm reaching my arms around the camera. So I'm just going to show you on this um, test piece. I'm in front of the fireplace because it's you know, this surface can take heat. So I like to lay the foam pieces down flat and then just go over it. Oh, it's so hard to evenly go over it. This thin piece is starting to curve a lot. That's definitely more than I would need it to be and it's just on this part but kind of just like 
curves all of the edges up. So I'm going to put my pieces face down because I want them to curl like, you know, towards the back of each piece. Here's a piece that I just heated up. It was laying face down like this and all the lines kind of just curved in. I don't know if you can see that. Even like on the little um, cutouts. So it just gives it more three-dimensional look. 